So welcome uh, class. We are going to discuss the fundamentals of finance. Uh, this is a paper that was done in December 2022. December 2022. And we'll go straight to question 4. So question 4. A. Identify four benefits that may accrue. Identify four benefits that may accrue to a firm from business crowdfunding. And this is uh, one mark each for the four points. Four benefits that may accrue to a firm from business crowdfunding. Now, business crowdfunding is where you simply try to raise money, raise money via the internet. So this is where you raise money through the internet, through the internet, through the internet. And normally you raise money from uh, the, it's open to the, any, any well-wisher in the entire world. So most cases will come up with a website uh, and then that website, you can now market the website so as to reach as many people as possible. And of course you will float the idea that you want uh, that you want people to help you raise the capital for so it is uh, that idea that uh, will uh, guide people in whether to on whether to help you raise the finance by contributing or not normally their interests are also captured in that uh, website when you try to sell the the, the the idea that you have the key points here is you must have an idea and then uh, try to sell pass the idea to them if they find the idea to be worth investing in, they will put their money and uh, that's how you, you, know, you raise your money to help you uh, put the idea into practice. So it's just about selling the idea to as many people as possible through the internet. People whom uh, in most cases you don't know. It goes out to the entire world and it depends on your, on your marketing skills to reach out as many people as possible and your convincing power. The more uh, they find the idea attractive, the more you are likely to raise uh, more capital and within a short period of time remember you have so many people out here who have capital and they don't have ideas so if they find your idea to be worth investing in of course they will now come in and uh, uh, put their money in that particular idea that is what we call crowdfunding you try to raise money from the public at large and we are basically talking about the entire world whoever the idea will reach and uh, you know, be able to convince you is, can participate in uh, raising finance for your business or your idea at that. So what are the benefits that may accrue to a firm from business crowdfunding? Number one, the ability to raise more capital. Ability to raise more capital. Of course, through crowdfunding, you might have access to to more capital or to capital it can be more capital or just capital access to capital and of course this capital will help you uh, pursue the idea to you know to take the idea to another level uh, by actualizing it so that is one of the key benefits that you are likely to enjoy as a result of uh, crowd uh, funding the other advantage of uh, crowdfunding is that it helps you market the idea. It helps you to market the idea. It helps you to market the idea as you try to reach out to uh, people to sell the idea you will also be selling what uh, you know the, 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 the whole idea is all about because you have to convince these people that it's actually a good idea worth investing their money in so they'll be able to know what the idea is all about and uh, of course through that you will also be testing if the idea is, accept, uh, is uh, acceptable by the market at large. Of course, if somebody can put his money in a certain idea, it means that it is a worthwhile uh, idea 
and uh, anybody can be easily convinced so we can uh, basically come up with an, uh, a point here that uh, uh, this process of crowdfunding can lead to market or idea validation market or idea validation by the time somebody agrees to put his money in a certain idea or in a certain venture it means that he has validated he has looked at that idea and seen that the idea can actually work so through this crowdfunding uh, you are uh, likely to get validation of the idea and then uh, the other reason is um, of course we've mentioned something about promotion it also helps you reach out to so many people and prepare people for the idea that is um, on its way so that people can get to know of oh, this idea is on its way this idea maybe there's a product that is coming up you know just prepare you are preparing the market for what is uh, yet to come so we can simply say that it can help you promote the idea and create a market for the idea before time before you actually commission the idea itself so we have market validation where you get to know if the idea will be accepted by the market and then you also have the, uh, the, the you know uh, like a promotion that by the time you are floating, floating the idea you are also actually trying to uh, you know to create awareness that there is this product which is a possibility which uh, a possibility that it might uh, be presented to the market anytime so long as that crowdfunding process goes uh, through uh, successfully then it's also a platform that uh, can help you raise feedback feedback it's normally very important that for an entrepreneur or any idea bearer to reach out to as many people as possible and get feedback on what these people think about the idea so this can be a, again a very good platform for feedback uh, you know from the world from the target population from the uh, potential users of that idea they will be floating ideas remember you are selling out this is the idea i have and you can come and help uh, help me you know through uh, help me raise the capital for this idea in the process you will get one or two things either to improve the idea or things that um, or uh, the views or opinions that uh, 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 possibly will shed some light on why the idea might not take off or why or what you should do to the idea so that it becomes even a better idea so we are basically talking about feedback on product uh, improvement and it doesn't have to just be on product improvement it can even be just feedback on whether or, or the perception of people towards your product whether it will pick up or if it will not uh, pick up then it also helps create a brand it also helps create a brand it also helps in creating a brand especially uh, if people love the idea you know it will pick up like immediately and people start talking about it and that will uh, enable the the, the 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 idea you know pick up very fast in the market when you uh, officially uh, commission it so we can also talk of uh, brand creation it helps in uh, creating that brand even before the real commissioning and then uh, the other advantage is that uh, it also reduces reduces dependency it reduces dependency on the traditional ways of funding some of uh, some of which might be very expensive especially if you go to banks and the group they are very expensive sometimes and of course there are a lot of uh, bureaucracies a lot of complexities to and fro and uh, you know this can offer a good alternative to raising uh, finances uh, other than this normal traditional ways which might be so expensive and uh, so time consuming uh, as a result of the complexities and the bureaucracies that we always go through before we can secure that money uh, I think these are very good points all of them so you can take any four points from this and you should be able to raise your uh, four marks uh, let's move to question 4b 
question 4b and uh, it says citing three reasons justify why a company should endeavor to maintain a stable dividend payment policy citing three reasons justify why a company should endeavor to maintain a stable dividend policy now a stable dividend policy the actual the opposite of the word stable is um, a fluctuating or volatile fluctuating i think let's go with the word fluctuating fluctuating this time possibly the dividends are high next time low the other time you miss out completely the other time so high you know they are never uh, static or constant but when you talk about a stable dividend policy this is where uh, you know even the shareholders expect a certain sum of money and it's always around that uh, level so we can simply say that it is consistent or it's constant or it's static or you know but the best word will be consistent something that somebody can expect and it turns out to be exactly what he or she expected so a stable uh, dividend policy basically it's not fluctuating we don't have those big uh, differences or uh, variances from you know the previous years it's basically consistent so uh, what are the reasons that justify why a company should endeavor to maintain a stable dividend policy now remember dividends are returns dividends are returns to the shares to the shares held by the shareholders a shareholder is the owner of a company to the extent of the shares he holds in that company so when you hold shares in a certain company you expect returns the returns are referred to as the dividends now anybody will invest in the shares of a company expecting returns you don't put your money where you don't expect returns so a company that has stable dividend policy is a good company to the shareholders because the expectations of the shareholders of the shareholders are likely to be met are likely to be met there is something that the shareholders expect when investing their money into in a certain company most likely if we are maintaining a stable dividend policy that expectation will be met because it's consistent it's at you know at the rate that is expected by the shareholders so one of the key benefits uh, of why a company should maintain a stable dividend policy is that it needs to be to, to, to be in a position to meet the expectation of the shareholders and remember if the company doesn't meet the expectation of the shareholders the shareholders will simply withdraw their money will simply withdraw their money and take that money elsewhere where the expectations are likely to be uh, achieved so with a stable dividend policy the shareholders will not ex be expecting much they will also not be expecting less but they will work within the 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 the, the you know the, the the levels that the company has set and that in uh, a great way uh, you know uh, goes with their uh, expectations which is a good thing now to the company as opposed to a company that is always today up next time uh, very low the other time you know so at the end of the day you don't build the expectations and this can lead to shareholders uh, withdrawing their ownership in the company especially when the uh, when the, the the dividends fluctuate to the low levels then the other uh, reason why a company should endeavor to maintain a stable dividend policy is for the reasons of attraction and retention it's very easy to retain the shareholders when the dividend policy is stable it's also good to attract the shareholders when the dividend policy is uh, dividend payment policy is stable because most shareholders plan they will come to to, to put their money in a in a in a in a in an investment 
that they expect possibly to meet one or two of their uh, their, 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 their their needs. So, for example, somebody might decide to put his money in a company, uh, you know, to 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 so that the dividends he received from that company will be used to pay school fees, or will be used to do you know A B C D. So it's very easy for them to put money in a company that is promising stable dividends so that at the end of the the, the the year he knows very well that this is the amount of money i will get from this which will be used to pay fees so he can plan himself in advance that plays a very important role of attracting so many investors because they can even plan before putting their money in that company and also retaining the ones who are already in the in the in the in the in the company simply put uh, a stable dividend policy enables planning which uh, is a very key ingredient of when it comes to attracting and retaining the shareholders planning the stable dividend policy enables planning and planning is a very key ingredient to attract and retain the shareholders the other reason why uh, a company should endeavor to maintain a stable dividend policy is because a stable dividend policy sends a signal to the market sends a signal to the market that the company is doing well it sends a signal to the market that the company is doing well and of course this is a very good signal uh, because it will have so many other ripple effects people will be willing to put money to invest their money in the company and that means that the company will actually now be stable and in fact some of these shareholders may not be willing to even receive the dividends instead they will be willing to let their money to, to retain their money in the company so that it can you know what we call the capital gains so it signals the market that the company it sends positive i think simply put let's just say it sends positive signals to the market that it is actually doing well as opposed to a company which is just fluctuating today it's there the other days the low dividends the other days you know those are very uh, worrying uh, trends and uh, if you put your money in such like a company you know you don't know what tomorrow holds so anybody will not want to invest in that that company and that becomes very risky to the company itself because it will try to raise money and uh, because people are not willing to invest people don't have trust in the company they don't know how it will participate it simply means that the company will not be able to raise enough money from the public and that will have very negative effects to the company then uh, the other thing is that uh, it also helps uh, the company uh, reduce dependency dependency on other sources of finances on other sources of finances sources of finances this is very much possible especially if the shareholders have a lot of faith and loyalty the company shares if the comp if the shareholders are loyal to the company they have a lot of faith in the performance of the company they will be willing at any given point in time to pump money into that company and that means that the company will not be dependent on other sources of finance which of course might also come in with their uh, fair share of uh, disadvantages so that comes in as a as an advantage and of course if it's an advantage it means uh, that we're also going to reduce so many other reduce other agency costs other agency costs these are the costs that you're going to incur in the process of trying to market or trying to source for other uh, you know funds and uh, it's not normally easy for a company just to reach out and get money there are some costs which are incurred in the process of reaching out for more money so that cost is likely to be avoided why because the shareholders will even be willing to pump their money 
to retain their money in that company. And that is where you pay them the stable dividends that we are talking about. And these people, because they have a lot of low faith in the company performance, they will be willing to let their money, to plow back their money, to invest back their money in, in the company. And that means that you are not going to spend a lot of money to, you know, to, 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 to float uh, other share, shares or to just look for other sources of funds, that will be mitigated and will not be talking about such like costs. And of course, you know what that means. If you reduce this other agency costs, it simply means that uh, uh, that it will translate to the profitability of the organization and uh, of course the wealth maximization uh, of the... I think we have also talked about the market perception. The market perception, yeah positive signal to the market i think we've talked about that that could also be the other advantage that we get from uh, a stable dividend payment policy let me see if there's any other one remaining uh, that we might have forgotten I think let's work with those ones. Those are around six points. Just get any three uh, points and we'll be good to go. Just get any three from these and we'll be good to go. Uh, they will help you answer the question why the company should endeavor to maintain a stable dividend policy. We've said number one, uh, stable, stable dividend policy help the shareholders to meet the expectation and so that means that the shareholder will uh, stay put the company uh, it also helps the attract uh, new uh, shareholders and then we've also said that it sends positive signals to the market which again improves or increases the value of the company and we've also said that it helps reduce the dependency on other sources of, fin of our finance and uh, last we've said that it reduces the agency costs, especially when you are trying to source for other sources of finance. All those are uh, reasons that justify why a company should go for stable dividend policies. Let's go to part C of the question. The following balances were extracted from the books of Eglite Manufacturing Company for the year 2021. So we have raw materials, the stock, I think this should be here. Stock is 72,000. Yeah, uh, let's just move them. Stock is 72,000. Actually, 72 million. But the zeros have been restricted. So, raw materials. That is the raw material. Work in progress. We have that. Finished goods. We have that. Accounts receivable. We have that. Accounts payable. We have that. Then, additional information. Annual sales amounted to 4.748 million. Then cost of production during the year amounted to cost of production during the year amounted to 2.32 million, 23.20 million. Raw materials purchased during the year amounted to 15.6 million. Annual cost of sales amounted to 862 million, and all sales and purchases made during the year were on credit terms. Assume that the year has 365 days. What are we required to do? Compute the working capital cycle for Eglite Manufacturing Company. And then the directors of Eglite Manufacturing Company intend to negotiate for longer credit periods from suppliers of raw materials. Explain the effect of this action on the working capital cycle. Good. So what we are supposed to do here is to compute the working capital cycle for Eglite. Working capital cycle basically captures the time period it takes for money to get out of, out of the company, move around, you know the whole process, and come back. So that uh, period it takes for the money either outside the uh, the, the, the uh, premises or in the premises. It's either you are using your money and your money is outside there, or you are using other people to do uh, business. So that basically is what the movement of cash so uh, let's look at this how do we compute the working capital cycle 
Now, working capital cycle, it has a formula, and we have so many formulas here that can help us work this out. So, working capital circle, it's made up of quite a number of so many formulas. So, we'll start with the first one, the raw material turnover. So, we'll have raw material turnover. How long does it take for the raw materials to know the number of days it takes for the raw materials to be? introduce into the into the the, the, the the factory to be worked on so raw materials turnover the formula is normally the average raw materials average raw materials over average raw materials over the over the credit purchases credit purchases because raw materials that we are purchasing is time 365 that is the formula so what we we'll do i think let's just work it out once and for all so average raw materials will come here and uh, take the average raw material this is 72000 plus 96000 uh, that gives you 168 divided by 2 168 divided by 2 this is 84 so 84000 uh huh. So we come here and say eighty-four thousand. This is eighty-four thousand divided by credit purchases. So we go back, see the credit purchases. This is sales. That is production. This is uh, raw materials purchased during the year, amounted to fifteen twenty-six. Yeah, this is what we are interested in. So raw materials purchased. During the year fifteen twenty six, so fifteen twenty six, fifteen twenty six million. So it means fifteen twenty six. Be very keen on these figures. This is a uh, fifteen twenty six million, fifteen twenty six million. This is eighty four million. So it's eighty four million over fifteen twenty six million times the number of days which we've been given here as three sixty five. So times three sixty five. We'll get the answer. So allow me to let me see if I can get the calculator here. Unfortunately, I can't get the calculator, so I'll just work it out here. So this will be 365.84 no, divided by 15.6. That times 365. We have 20 days. So this gives us 20 days like that then we go to number two normally we follow the order from raw materials we will bring the raw materials first the raw materials will stay for 20 days before they are introduced into the into the factory then once they are introduced into the factory our next area of interest will be the work in progress this is work the raw materials that are already into the system being worked on so how long do they take to be worked on from the point of introduction to the point when we get the finished goods? How long will it take? We want to know uh, how the, the, the period of time that it takes that we hold our money. So, work in progress turnover, this will be equals to average work in progress over average work in progress over uh, the cost cost of uh, cost of uh, over the cost of uh, production cost of production because now here we are producing we are in the factory work in progress cost of production they go together times 365 so we we'll come here and say average whip whip is work in progress so 32 plus 44 that is 76 76 divided by 2 38,000 so we'll simply come here and say 38,000 divided by cost of production. The cost of production is cost of production, cost of production. The cost of production is 2320 million. So 2320 million times 365. That should be able to give us the number of days. So I'll come to my calculator 38 divided by 2320. Give me that times. Uh, 
from 320 times 365, we have 6 days. So here we have 6 days. That is the answer. The number we get is on days. We are looking at how long it takes for how, how long we are holding our money. 20 days raw materials. We are, we've, hold, we've held the raw material for 20 days. Then we are working on that raw materials for 6 days. Then the next thing after working on that is the finished goods. So we'll have the finished goods turnover. Finished goods turnover. How long do we stay with the finished goods before we sell them? So finished goods turnover, the formula is um, the average stock in finished goods. Average stock in finished goods over the cost of over cost of sales. Notice how we are moving. Raw materials we are purchasing. Work in progress we are producing. Finished goods we are selling. Finished goods are for sales. So that's how it goes. Times 365. Sorry. Times 365. So we come here. Average uh, finished goods. This will be 126 plus 138. 126 plus 138. That gives us 264. This will give us 132. So it's this is 132,000. 132,000. So we come back here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So these things are moving. Okay, good. So we come here and say one that this is times 365. So it equals to 132,000 divided by cost of sales so let's get the cost of sales from here 2862 million so 2862 million times 365 that will give us 132 132 divided by 2862 this will give us that one times 365 times 365 that gives us 17 days 16.8 roughly translates 17 days so it means we are going to hold the finished goods for 17 days before we sell them and then when we sell the assumption is that we are selling them on credit so the debtors so we'll talk about the debtors collection period debtors collection period collection period so debtors collection period is equal to average debtors over and because you are talking about average data we come here yeah now this is annual sales annual sales what we are selling so annual sales annual sales here is um 47 48 47 48 over annual sales times 365 data goes with sales finished goods cost of sales i think you can see the relationship so is equals to average data we've said is um i will not work that one out so we'll simply come back here average data is uh 218 data is accounts receivable so 218 plus 254 divided by two i think if i'm not wrong this will give you 236,000. so we we'll simply come back here and say 236,000. To that six thousand divided by, I think the figure was for seven eighty four million. For seven eighty four, let me just confirm. Yeah, for forty eight, for seven forty eight million. Sorry for that. So for seven forty eight million times three sixty five. So that will give us. Uh, I have to use my calculator again. Two thirty six divided by. 748 times 365 this gives me 18 days so 18 days so it means the data on average will stay with our money for 18 days now after that you have now the the payables we we'll talk of the creditors creditors or accounts payable creditors collection period creditors collection period how long does it take for us to pay our creditors whoever it is we have purchased the goods from and the formula is average creditors 
average creditors. And notice average creditors and uh, please notice we are talking about creditors. So we definitely work with the purchases. So purchases and these things are here that all sales and purchases were made on credit terms. That's where the big assumption is. So now if all credit sales were made on, uh, all purchases were made on credit, then just come here and say annual raw materials purchased during the year 1526. So that's what we'll use, 1526. We'll say uh, it's the same as this, credit purchases. So credit purchases, credit purchases times 365. So what is the average creditors? The average creditors is 208 plus 202. That will give you, divide by 2 of course, that will give you 205,000. 205,000. So simply come here and say 205,000. 205,000 divided by credit purchases. I think the figure is here. 1526,000 times 365. That will give us 205 divided by 1526. Right by 1526, it's times 365. That gives us 49 days. Wow. This means that we stay for 49 days before we pay the, our suppliers. So now the question is the working capital. Complete the working capital cycle for Eglite. Now, the working capital cycle for Eglite will be calculated as follows. Working capital cycle capital cycle is equals to we'll take all these days so we'll have the in fact we can just add all this we don't have to repeat working capital cycle is equal to this plus this plus this plus this minus this why minus this this is the number of days that this money assume we were to pay this money at the very beginning when we buy these raw materials then we stay with the raw material for 20 days. We convert the raw materials into finished goods 6 days. So how many days are those? 26. Then we stay with the finished goods before selling. We just stay with them in the warehouse for 17 days. How many days are those? 26 plus 17? 43. Then we sell these goods on, on credit. So that the debtors now stay with that money for 18 days. So 43 plus 18 days. How many days are those? 43 plus 18. That should give us, um, I think, 61 days. 43 plus 18, yeah. It's 61 days. So this gives us 61 days. And then we pay our creditors after 49 days. So it means that The working capital circle is 12 days. Our money stays outside for only 12 days. We will pay our creditors after 49 days. But our debtors, on the other hand, after going through the entire process, will pay us after. The entire process will take us 61 days to recover our money. So 61 minus 49, you get... 12 days. So working capital cycle is, a cycle is simply raw materials turnover plus whip turnover plus finished goods turnover plus debt collection turnover in, in days of course minus credit collection uh, period. So this will give you the working capital cycle which in our case is 12 days. This plus this plus this plus this minus this you get 12 days. That is the answer to that question. 12 days is the working capital cycle. It takes 12, the, basically the difference between the, the, the receivables and money going out payables is 12 days. So we can simply say that money, our money is held outside the business for 12 days. Then the directors of Eglet Manufacturing Company intend to negotiate for longer credit periods from suppliers of raw materials. Wow, that would be the best thing. If they can negotiate for the for a longer credit period, then that would be the best thing. And it depends with how many days. For example, if they are to negotiate for 90 days, what does that mean? 
it takes 61 it will take 61 days for the data for the entire cycle to complete to get their money but they will have how many more days 29 days before they can pay their creditors which means they have 29 days to use the creditors money to their benefit so if they can negotiate for more days for longer credit period that would be the best thing they can do that would be the best thing they can do so we uh, actually support uh, that they negotiate for longer credit periods or they work towards reducing uh, the, the, the data collection period okay so let's look at this the, exp the question is explain the effect of this action on the working capital cycle so the effect of that is that uh, the, 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 the working capital cycle will actually reduce will actually reduce actually reduce will reduce further and this will lead to this will lead to uh, you know improved liquidity levels it will lead to improved liquidity levels and if they can actually reduce that to negative where now they, 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 they are the ones who are using the, the, the creditors money I think it will be a benefit to them so basically it will improve on their liquidity levels thank you that is the answer to that question let's meet in the next question and remember you can subscribe share with your colleagues and can also join our school which is a global open learning center uh, just visit us on our website and learn more with us thank you so much welcome